White. We're at the uh, Wood River Community YMCA, and this is the third uh, lecture that we're giving. It's uh, High Hopes for Low Back Pain. <clears throat> this is June 28, uh, 2022. Uh, I, there's always a disclaimer, so at the beginning here, I want us to let you know that the material that I give you today uh, is provided by me, James White, PhD, and it's for educational purposes. And so if you have a specific problem, uh, medical problem, uh, you should check with your physician before you use any of my recommendations because it may be contraindicated by your own medical advisor. <clears throat> Since this is the third health lecture, we have two others, Slow the Aging Process and <clears throat> Nutrition Update 2022. And so uh, this uh, lecture, can be uh, viewed by contacting uh, Jacob Winters at the YMCA here, and there's his phone number, and there's his email address. So you can contact him and he will make arrangements for you to see these presentations. So today's lecture is uh, High Hopes for Low Back Pain. Uh, you can see my email address, ucsdprof, at gmail.com. I taught at UC San Diego. I taught in the PE department and the School of Medicine. I was there for 38 years. I was a director of exercise physiology and preventive medicine lab in our PE department. And during my tenure, I tested 11,000 people. And we have data on those 11,000 and we found out what worked well for uh, following our recommendations and what didn't work so well. So we have had maybe several thousand with low back pain and uh, we gave them specific uh, recommendations and exercise, uh, traction, diet, and so forth. And those who did well, we recorded those data and those who didn't do so well, we recorded those data and we came up with what is uh, best. And all of this research was conducted at the School of Medicine at University of California at San Diego. Uh, looking at some of our data from, uh, from that 38 year tenure, uh, we find that about 25% uh, of sedentary students and about 35% of the campus employees came up with some sort of low back pain during their tenure. In fact, it affected almost 50% of manual laborers on campus. And looking at America as a whole, 50% of adults will have one or more low back pain occurrences each year. <clears throat> It's uh, a pretty costly event. Every year, 45 million American adults visit doctors <clears throat> because of low back pain episodes. And millions of hours are lost. And the annual loss in the US economy was about $65 billion due to low back pain. But with the COVID and people being inactive and uh, restricted to their apartments or their jobs or whatever, that has increased to over 82 billion lost dollars out of our economy. <clears throat> now, what is the etiology? How does a person come about to get a back pain episode? Well, you can have an abrupt injury uh, pressure or severe impact, and that happens to about 13% of the patients that we looked at. Uh, weakened spinal muscles accounts for about 80%. So this is the main thing that we're gonna talk about today, is how to strengthen uh, the muscle uh, of the spinal co column to reduce low back pain. Uh, another uh, source of low back pain, the etiology is congenital or degenerative diseases, and about uh, only 7% of patients uh, have these problems, but in older populations, around almost 30% is due to arthritis. Uh, there are specific arthritic back pain 
problems and uh, those are medical treatments and those are beyond the scope of this lecture but I did want to mention them in case uh, one of the viewers ha is having some arthritic problems with their back. There's called ankylosing spondylitis and you can see by the graph here the, on, the, uh, on their left you can see that the normal spine has nice thick uh, intervertebral discs and when you get a little older and you have this uh, spondylitis those discs reduce in size and actually start approaching the bones of the, of the, uh, the spinous processes start approaching one another and then finally in advanced spondylitis you can see there that there is ankylosis and that means that those bones are actually fused together and now we have a, a situation of continual uh, pain. There are other uh, forms of arthritic back problems, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and uh, arthritis with inflammatory bowel syndrome. <clears throat> now, in the typical low back pain situation, it can occur from long-term sitting or standing in the same position. Another problem that we, uh, that we found in our research was that morning low back pain occurred in people who <coughs> slept in, either on their side or on their back or on their tummy, or they elevated the head. And uh, something that was very interesting, when we further analyzed some of their data, we found that a large percentage of them were sleeping upon very soft mattresses and then a smaller percentage were sleeping on very firm mattresses. So we're looking for uh, uh, like uh, Goldilocks, uh, trying to find the, the uh, most uh, beneficial mattress for a person is something that you have to ex almost experiment with and uh, work. But we found that most of the cases with low back pain that occurs in the morning results from uh, too soft a mattress. So I searched the literature and found that uh, if you can see by the curvature of the spine here for people that sleep on their stomach, on their side, or on their back, that if you're on a too soft mattress, you get a curvature that will cause irritation to this, the low back pain, the, the mostly the lower thoracic vertebrae and the, the lumbar area sometimes going down to the uh, coccyx area. If you have too firm a mattress, you can see that the uh, situation is uh, just about the opposite of a too soft mattress. You get an opposite direction in the curvature of the spine. So down here we have our just right mattress where the spine is parallel to the floor. And so this is something that you really have to sort of experiment with, find the right mattress. And in most cases, probably 80% of the people in our program, we found that a firm mattress relieved their back pain. And uh, I don't know, maybe you can sleep around a little bit and uh, try to find somebody to let you sleep in their mattress to see what's going on. Also another, relief that might help you is to take a pillow to bed with you. You can see here on the left that we have a person that uh, sleeps on their back just under the knees. Uh, side sleepers, you can put the pillow between the knees. And if you're a tummy sleeper, you can put it underneath uh, your tummy and that will straighten out the uh, lumbar and thoracic uh, vertebrae and help relieve pain. Now in our study at uh, the university, we found out that the reason that a lot of people were having quite severe low back pain was from improper lifting. And if you can see here at the bottom of the screen here where it says ligaments, this is the fourth lumbar and the fifth lumbar. This is the area usually where we get a sciatic nerve problem a nerve pinch and so when you bend over in this position and pick up a heavy box or whatever you can see that what it does to those ligaments and the tendons 
uh, material in those lower back problems and this is where you're going to get a lot of pain. Other reasons for low back pain is sit, sitting and reaching down. And here's something that uh, I have searched the literature for thoroughly and I cannot find one reference, but if you can see the young lady, she's reaching down, touching her foot. Now, if she would reach back and to her left and like she's picking up a, a pencil or something on the floor, that puts the, thoracic, the lumbar vertebrae in a very, very tenuous position. And that's where we get quite a bit of injury. So this is something I want to share with you that well, I can't find it in the literature, but sitting, reaching down to the floor and reaching back really uh, 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 is, a, is a dangerous maneuver. If you try to lift too much weight or if you try to lift it too many times, you uh, are a, a candidate for low back pain. Other reasons are unaccustomed strenu uh, strenuous spinal movement, repeated movements, for example, the golf swing. We found that people who use one bucket of balls and practice their drives are pretty, it doesn't really affect their back, but people who pick up three or four buckets of balls on a Saturday and go out and practice their drives are, are really high candidates. So I advise you if you're gonna be doing some repeated golf swings, uh, limit that number. Uh, also, if you're carrying excess body weight and you have a little tummy that you're uh, carrying around, I'd uh, suggest losing a little weight because what that does when you have your abdominal uh, apron extended, what it does, it gives you back extension of the back and that causes uh, uh, irritation to the uh, thoracic and the lumbar area. Now, when, when you do those, uh, when you do extra exercises or improper exercises or improper lifting, what happens is you get a degenerative dis disc, this is what it looks like. You get a bulging disc, and although not uh, pictured on this, uh, on this uh, uh, bony uh, projection here down on the herniated disc, there are nerves that exit your spine. I'll show you that in a moment. If you have a herniated disc or a bulging disc, that material rubs up against the nerve and causes an enormous amount of pain, usually a sciatic nerve, nerve problem, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll give you some good clues about that. Down at the bottom, we have arthritic or aging from a thinning disc, and you can see that we have almost bone on bone, and this is a constant uh, situation for uh, low back pain. Now, you can end up with a back pain even though you have a normal, healthy vertebrae. If you look at the uh, depiction on, the, on your right, you can see that there are seven cervical vertebrae, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae, the ninth one is down in this area, and then we have five lumbar area and the sacrum and the coccyx are down here and what happens is if you have persistent severe back pain that occurs not just because you've been out there doing extra work or extra exercise but seems never to go away or a pain that hurts more at night or a pain in your where your arms and legs feel numb or you suddenly can't control your body functions, you really need to call a physician for possible medical intervention. And I will tell you what you probably will happen when you see your doctor. The doctor will recommend that you get a MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging, and that gives both hard uh, material and soft tissue studies and they usually combine that with an x-ray. So between your MRI and your x-ray, the doctor will be able to diagnose what's wrong with your back. Uh, they might also want to do a slightly different investigation called a myelogram or a CT scan, and that's a, a computer tomography scan. And they combine that with a special x-ray, 
and with that they can get a cross-sectional three-dimensional spinal image and they can really pinpoint the problem that you're having. Uh, in this lecture we will not be giving you MRIs, a surgical uh, recommendations, but would recommend that you do see your physician and see a really good specialist uh, that does backs. Now today's talk about is going to be about acute low back pain that does not require medical help. And if you look again at your, your you have your cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae that can have a problem. Up above here is a normal ver vertebral body, and in the middle is a normal fibrous disc. Down below, this poor person did either some rotational pressure, was in an accident, or did some postural pressure, and has put a lot of undue pressure on that vertebral disc, and now we have a situation where it's starting to generate low back pain. So this is what it looks like. The segment of the vertebral column can re receive traumatic impact, and that forces that vertebral body to be compressed in a downward position. And you'll notice that it changes its shape. Uh, and here we have a normal one up here. Here we have the compressed one. And we have what is called vertebral displacement. And when you have vertebral displacement, you're going to have some pain. And we want to do something about it. So what we're going to suggest here is a, an exercise program that helps the disc itself. We have this, this orange disc in the middle. We have the bones above and below. And this green ligament completely covers the sides of your vertebral column from your cervical all the way down to your tailbone. And when you have weakened ligaments due to bad po posture or um, uh, a, um, a herniated uh, accident, uh, you're going to have a problem with your sciatic nerve. And in fact, 40% of adults experience sciatic nerve sometime in their life. And here I've got a picture of exactly what it looks like. You have the disc is here, this purple material is the disc covering. Inside is a jelly-like material. When you herniate that disc, that uh, material comes out and rubs severely against the nerve. And when that nerve is compressed and pushed against, you get what is called a sciatic nerve pinch. And as I said before, 40% of uh, Americans uh, have a sciatic nerve pinch during their lifetime and I will tell you they can last for years and they are very very troublesome. The pain starts up here usually in the lumbar fourth and fifth or maybe even down low into the sacral one two and three area but most of the time it's around uh, lumbar four and five. Even though the injury is up on your spine, you can have pain all of these places or one or two places particularly. For example, in this case, uh, I can remember one of uh, my athletes at the university uh, had a soccer uh, injury due to uh, running up to, into a, uh, another player, and he had pain in the bottom of his foot even though the injury was all the way up on his uh, lumbar fifth, the pain migrated down to the back of his calf and then mostly into the bottom of his foot. So we did some very special uh, treatment with that and uh, I'll explain that in a moment. So <clears throat> what kind of help can you uh, imagine uh, this situation. If you look at uh, vertebrae number one, we have compression here, we have the bulging disc rubbing up against that nerve, causing the nerve in that area and maybe down the entire leg. 
But if we can some way decompress, in other words, lift those two, separate those two fibrous uh, materials so that we relieve the pressure inside here, we get what is called a, a sort of a normal vertebral column. And so how do we decompress so that this compressed disc looks like a normal disc. Well, there are a couple of things that we can do. Uh, you've probably seen these on television, these tilt boards where you uh, hook your ankles in and you swing down and you can stay up uh, upside down, hanging from your ankles or from your knees, depending on the model. And uh, if, you, if you want to use something like this for your uh, decompression uh, uh, of your spine, uh, I'd recommend only about 20 minutes a day because what we found out using these instruments in our laboratory is that they cause knee and hip problems. So don't uh, overdo these uh, traction devices. A very fine one uh, down here is the Total Gym. You can hook your uh, ankles here and uh, place this uh, slant board at any angle you wish. Then you can also reach over with your hands up to the bottom here and pull yourself, adding more traction to that to the spinal column, and that will relieve it. There, here up above here is a slant board, and if you have here at the YMCA, there is a, uh, a, a chinning bar, and you can just reach up and hang down, hang for 10, 15 seconds until your arms get tired drop down easily. You don't want to drop down abruptly because that just traumatizes that uh, disc that we're trying to separate. And do several minutes or several uh, re reps of hanging. Or you can make a homemade slant bar and uh, lay down on that bar for 20 minutes at a time. This is a beautiful way that you can very inexpensively uh, uh, reduce the traction in the spine and uh, help reduce the uh, low back pain. Now, if you're a, a side sleeper or a back sleeper or you're on a soft mattress, you can go on the internet, type in night roll, night roll, and you'll get find a, a little device that you can put under your spine. And look what it does here. You have the first, you have lumbars one through five here, at an angle because a soft mattress allows the spine and the thoracic spine to drop down. This uh, night roll flattens this out and keeps your spine uh, level and that will reduce the pressure and the pain on, in, in those spinous processes. Also uh, reconsider the, uh, using the pillow, pillow between the knees, uh, very effective and helpful. If you use what is called a bed wedge, and you can go on the internet, type in bed wedge, and it will give you uh, a series of tri triangular styrofoam with a, with a nice cover over them. They cost about 50 to $60. And uh, this one I wouldn't recommend, it's too short. You can see that he's probably helping maybe his thoracic and cervical vertebrae, but it's not helping his low back pain at all because he's, he's too big for this short one. So get a large, large one that comes down all the way down to your, uh, the bottom of your coccyx, to your tailbone, and this laid out flat will, I guarantee, will help you if you're having trouble with morning back pain as a result. Now, uh, I have a five-step program for relieving back pain. There are five steps to it. It's very simple. I'm, I'm going to show you an abbreviated uh, sample of that. And if you want the full program, you can email me and I'll send you a copy of the exercises that we use. Uh, here you can see the gentleman is sitting here and he's stretching the erector spiny muscles of the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, coccyx area and stretching that out. You can also do this on your hands and knees. This is called a mad cat. Here you can see they're relaxed and here you hump up your back and, and this what this does, it stretches the erector spiny muscles and will help. 
In this second exercise, you simply lay on the floor and extend your spine. And what this does, it stretches the erector, the, uh, the erector muscles of the back. And this gives you a stretching of the abdominal muscles. So we get both stretching on both sides, which are very important. The second thing is strengthening. This is a little uh, sit up here. You cross the right knee over, then you do a sit up and turn to the right. What that does, it strengthens the uh, two abdominal muscles on the right side. You do maybe five or 10 of these, switch over, put your uh, opposite left leg over and look to your left and that uh, strengthens the opposite muscle. So you're getting all four layers of muscles when you do this abdominal one. When you do the back arch here, this strengthens the erector spiny muscles back here and will give you uh, a good balance between flexion and extension. And that's what uh, a, a way to realign the, the spine and help with the uh, back problems. Uh, traction, uh, we discussed that before. You can use a total gym or a slant bar or hanging to decompress the spine. And so traction is the third part of this exercise program. The fourth part is some type of aerobic exercise. So you can do something like ballroom dancing, stationary bicycle, uh, a step machine, elliptical, water uh, exercises here at the Y. They've got a great pool program. And so though exercises in the water are non-weight bearing and excellent for back problems. You can also do walking. Uh, I don't recommend jogging uh, for people that are having, experiencing back pain because every time you jog, the impact is of almost doubles when the uh, weight is on one foot. So I would recommend Nordic walking with the, with the ski poles here. Notice how level her hips are, shoulders and everything. So Nordic walking would be a wonderful way to do your aerobic exercise. Here on uh, this gentleman in the middle, he's walking downstairs. Uh, every time you step down, remember you're increasing the G-force from one G up to almost two Gs when you step down or run downhill. So you want to avoid that. Now look at this lady here. She's out there power walking along the beach in La Jolla. Uh, that looks like a pretty good uh, way to do aerobic exercise, but look what she's got in her hands. She has 10 pound weights in each hand. What that does, it puts a total of 20 pounds of excess weight right down on her vertebrae. And so that's going to uh, uh, cause more comp compression to the spine. So if I were if I were her coach, I would say uh, leave your weights at home and do nice uh, long stride, easy walking so that you don't get additional impact. And at the end of your exercise program during the day, uh, sit down for maybe 15 to 20 minutes, get your back at an angle of 35 to 45 degree incline backwards. We don't want you to finish a traction program and then finish with jumping up and down or doing something where you're re-administering compression to your spine. We want your spine to have that at least 20 minutes of post-exercise recovery without uh, any uh, extra uh, uh, impact on it. This is something that if you go to a therapist, they will say, do most of your standing and sitting in a pretty vertical position. And we found in our study at the university and subsequent studies that vertical or forward leaning only irritates the spine more. So if you're gonna do some sitting, computer work, driving, television, reading, whatever, I would recommend that you tilt uh, your chair back or get into a, a chair that allows tilting back so that you're not uh, putting vertical compression on. Because if you're sitting, if you're sitting vertically, you're putting almost half of your body weight right on your spine, and that's compressing those vertebral discs, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So if you would like the full uh, five-step uh, program, you can email me 
at UCSD Prof, University of California, San Diego professor, UCSDProf gmail.com, and I'll send you a copy of that uh, uh, program. And again, again, repeating the home treatments, you can put hot or cold compressors on your back if your back hurts. But you're going to have to experiment to find out whether heat is good for it or cold. If you have inflamed, inflammatory back problem, then you want to use cold. If the back problem is not inflammatory, you can use hot. But you have to experiment to find out which is best. <coughs> Excuse me. 20 minutes of ice and then take it away for 20 minutes and then maybe 20 minutes again with ice, but don't leave it on for a half hour or an hour. And the same with heat. About 20 minute limit is uh, what we found to be the most effective in, uh, in uh, tr home treating of low back pain. Now, non-prescription medications, I can give you some ideas that worked in our program, aspirin, Tylenol, and Advil. Uh, if you have other uh, back pain medications, uh, you'll have to get those prescribed by your physician. Non-invasive treatments, uh, massage therapy is really very effective. And if you have a friend that will rub your back or if you uh, know of a, a uh, individual in, in the, the area that does uh, massage therapy, I know that there's a gentleman in, in um, Haley I, I don't know his name, but he's, he does uh, uh, injury treatment with massage, and I will tell you, they, he is terrific. Uh, you can use progressive muscle relaxation. I have a lecture on progressive relaxation. We might do that uh, one of these days. Uh, physical therapy and chiropractic are effective. Biofeedback. Uh, I don't know of anyone in the area that does biofeedback. Biofeedback is where they put electrodes over your back muscles and then they record the amount of electrical activity caused by the spasm of those muscles due to the pain. And what, it, and what they do is they take that uh, electrical uh, recording and they put it into a microphone so you can hear a, a sound. So you can lie there and relax and learn how to progressively relax your spasmed muscle by reducing the amount of sound that comes out on AMG. I don't know of anybody that does it in this area, but it is a pretty, biofeedback is a pretty uh, effective way to do this. There are invasive medical treatments that might be good for lumbar and spinal uh, pain and it's a nerve block whereby they simply using a fluoroscope and a, and a, and a needle and, a, and they inject uh, cortisone uh, or some other uh, anesthetic uh, material into this, the nerve in your back that reduces the pain. And what that does, it allows the musculature and the tissue in that area to relax a lot so that you're not continually tightening it up and those muscles relax, allow you to have some residual uh, reduction in pain due to the uh, epidural block injections. Another one that they do is the same injection, only they don't put uh, a, a anesthetic material in there, but they do electrical shock. And that shocks the muscle, that shocks the nerve, and it, it takes away the pain for an extended period of time. And it's a pretty, uh, you know, to think of having, I've had it done, and to think of having a needle stuck in your back is scary, but they, they do it very, very effectively, and it's a marvelous way to reduce pain in your back. There's another uh, method called acupuncture, uh, where it's sort of, I put kind of non-invasive, though, where they put little needles in your back, and uh, they, I do know that they do it in this area. I don't know, I have not done it personally to myself, so I can't give any testimony, but I, I do know that they can also attack a, a electro uh, uh, acupuncture, and that is very, very good, and particularly for people with uh, migraine headaches. So that technique is, uh, acupuncture is pretty good. Another one is acupressure, where they actually find 
it's a Chinese uh, uh, medicine technique and where they do pressure on certain spots on your body. In this case, for the low back pain, the back of the knees and the up above, back into the lumbar area where they actually use their fingers or thumbs and they use them quite a bit of pressure. And that is pretty effective, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, interesting things that I do in preparation for lectures like this is I go to PubMed and to the uh, most recent publications on uh, uh, medical journals. And uh, I, I dug up uh, 12 recent medical studies that show that, <coughs> excuse me, 33 to 50% of healthy, asymptomatic young men aged uh, under 32 years of age display early sounds of spinal disc, disc bulging or herniation. And why is this happening nowadays? Well, they call it the teenage slouch. And it, does this look pr uh, familiar to any of you? Uh, uh, no matter where you go, you'll see these young people with their phones. And I call it persistent phone posture. And uh, this can really, over a period of time, can uh, hurt your posture, but also uh, cause uh, uh, incessant low back pain. So I would uh, recommend, even though they are kind of at an angle than the upper picture, you can see the two bottom ones, they're, they're leaning forward and stretching out the lumbar area, causing irritation against the processes. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds of anti-inflammatory food suggestions. Uh, if you're experiencing back pain, I would recommend that you get into a diet that emphasizes uh, oxygen-free radical foods and uh, anti-inflammatory foods. I have a list here if you want the list. I would uh, send that to you. Some foods that you can avoid are processed, refined sugar, white flour, refined and processed meat, for example, luncheon meat, ham, and so forth. I would be very careful about eating peanuts if you have back problem, back pain, because a lot of people are allergic to peanuts and they don't know it. And it, it uh, peanuts are inflammatory. Pistachio nuts are some, another one that you have to look out for. Pistachio nuts are uh, and the same genus of um, uh, poison oak and poison ivy. Uh, that's uh, something that most people don't know. So I would avoid peanuts and pistachio nuts if you're having low back pain. See if that will, uh, by omitting those, see if that will help. To sum up, and I've got a couple more slides here. So we want to do prevention in low back pain. You do stretching, strengthening, especially the extension muscles and frequently employ the traction that I showed you, the incline board and so forth. The safety aspect, if any back exercises that you try cause severe or persistent pain, discontinue them. And if you, if you have a problem with that, give me an email and I'll give you some suggestions. Weight training uh, is very good to strengthen the abdominals and the rest of your muscles. And I will tell you something that uh, two recent studies have shown that women who do weight training and probably more than moderate, but pretty phys physical weight training four times a week have between 30 and 40% less breast cancer. And this is very important. So uh, if uh, there are women in the audience, I pl please recommend that you get into a weight training program. They have a great one here at the YMCA. Uh, you want to attain po proper uh, body weight so that your abdominal muscles uh, 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 are not bulging out and uh, uh, causing extension in the back. Aerobic conditioning, non-weight bearing, water exercises, great YMCA pool here. And uh, you want to be active. What we found in our program at the UC San Diego School of Medicine, we found that physically fit people have 67% less body pain. 
and it is especially beneficial with delaying or preventing spinal arthritis. Finally here, a couple of studies that I just looked up put out in uh, between 2022, between 2020 and 2022, they found that um, uh, doing a lot of research into this COVID problem, they uh, did some, uh, a lot of looking at the immune system and the anti-inflammatory components of the immune system. And so what they found out is that if you sit around inactive for between three and eight hours, for example, watching a movie, uh, driving in a car, uh, air flight where you're, you're uh, sitting for a long period of time, there is a rapid loss by a urination of two protective anti-inflammatory compounds that are in your body. So sitting around, you lose these anti-inflammatory compounds. One is glycosamine glycons, it's a polysaccharide, and chondroitin. You've probably heard of those two uh, uh, compounds. They are both actively protecting the joint cartilage. And so if you sit for long periods of time, these two, you lose these anti-inflammatory compounds and so we want you to make sure that you don't have long periods of sitting. And now, after 30 to 45 minutes of complete non-movement, like you're sitting today listening to this lecture, and I'm gonna have you up exercise in a moment. Uh, after 30 to 45 minutes of complete non-movement, there is cartilage destruction. And, the, and it's caused from your body and three potent anti-inflammatory enzymes, uh, cyclooxygenase, and you'll find that in almost any word that ends in ASE is an uh, enzyme. So cyclooxygenase and the one down below, metalloproteinase, and interleukin-1 and interleukin-1-beta are all pro-inflammatory enzymes that destroy the cartilage that is used in your body to line your joints and keep your joints healthy and without pain. So with exercise, these destructive enzymes subside and the joint will start repairing itself. But don't sit around for long periods of time of 30 to 45 minutes without doing some type of exercise. And finally, if you have any questions, we can talk about those now. And uh, if you uh, would like any of the material we talked about, UCSDProf at Gmail, um, you can uh, contact me and ask me, and very, be, be very specific about what you would like. And I will take any questions